Okay, we are now live and welcome everybody to this uh, very special live stream uh, where we're going to tackle the topic of, uh, I guess, have a little, well, maybe not a debate, but whether the pen uh, is mightier than the keyboard. And uh, it's an interesting topic um, that, uh, that I've been, I guess, reading about for quite some time um, and, and have done quite a little bit of work in uh, a long time ago uh, in in the olden days, I guess. Um, but uh, joining me today, I've got uh, a very special guest, Brett Gilbertson, uh, with me to, to have a conversation. Now, Brett has done uh, and produced a lot of content around this particular topic recently. So uh, he has, uh, has some great insights uh, into uh, a lot of different aspects of, of um, you know, the digital pen and digital note taking and, and uh, the productivity gains and, and all of this type of, of stuff around uh, digital uh, note taking and digital pen usage. So welcome, Brett. Um, for everybody that's joining, let's just uh, give um, a little bit of a, an insight as to uh, yourself and, and what you do. Yeah, thanks, Daniel. It's really good to be here and chat to you. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a trainer, effectively, and um, I really focus in on um, on people's productivity. So um, for for many years now, we've been working together with Microsoft and, and companies directly to teach people how to use things like their Surface devices or uh, any other device as well that actually comes with like a digital pen. And that's sort of been our, our specialty is just sort of introducing people to, you know, the concept of using a pen on a computer. Uh, but we teach people, you know, in, in general terms, you know, sort of productivity across the Office 365 and Microsoft 365 suite as well. So we do a lot of Teams training and, um, you know, training on products like OneNote as well and, and Planner and all sorts of different things. So, yeah, I'd sort of really, I, I guess more than a trainer, I really class myself as a productivity coach. And, you know, where, you know, myself and my brother both do this training work together. And we um, we really want people to use the technology that they've got more effectively and, and really start to expand what they do with it. So that's a bit of basic background. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I guess traditionally this, this type of topic lends itself to, to more education and, and uh, schools and, and that type of thing. Uh, you know, a, a long time ago uh, I, I used to work with um, – uh, a guy that we both know, we were just talking about before, Travis Smith, uh, in the education space, and you know he's he's very big on on uh, you know students uh, and the way that they learn and and that type of thing with uh, with these devices um, and and uh, using the pen in classrooms and, and that type of thing. But it uh, a, a lot of times, uh, it, sorry, Travis is a big part of my journey as we were talking about, yeah. This before, like, um, for me, like I, I probably, I think it was about 2001, 2002, um, I had a rep from a company, I can't remember what they were called, I think they became part of Commander, but they came out to the place that I worked at and they showed me this new tablet computer, like 2000, you know, we're, tw we're talking 20 years ago here mm. and it was actually, it was, I've got one here, it's, you know, here's one I prepared earlier, but, you know, that <laughs> was like the computer that they yeah. had and I just went, ah. Oh, yeah, computer with a pen on it. That's brilliant because I was really terrible with notes. Like I would, I would write paper notes all the time, but I was just disorganized. You know, like I'd have them all stuffed mm. in my bag, and you know, I just lose them all the time. And so when I went notes on a computer, that makes so much sense to me. But these things back when I first bought one, it was terrible. They were just really not great computers. But that was, um, you know, probably around about three grand back in the mm. day, twenty years ago. So what we're probably talking like six, seven, eight grand in today's money. Yeah, yeah. Sort of jumped out at me. And so I'd sort of, you know, bumbled along for many years with pen-based computers like this one, actually. The point of this one was it was a tablet came with a pen. Um, about 2015, 2014, I think I met Travis. And that was when uh, Travis did a presentation. I just went along to it. Uh, it. He still does a similar presentation today about the power of the pen. You would have, yep. you know. Yep. You would have seen him develop that probably way back in the day when you worked with him, and um, it cha that changed my direction because I went, ah, you know, like it was intuitive to me and in that I just went, yeah, that makes sense. You know, I, I need to have a pen on my computer. It's not intuitive to everybody, but he put the science behind it, you know, and, and he put it in the educational context, and I got together with him later on 
and um, we, you know, we had a few meetings and, and brainstorming sessions. And um, I just sort of said, well, does this stuff not apply to the corporate world? Okay, if, if, if there's research that says you learn better, you remember things better when you take notes with a pen, is that not the case in business as well, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It, it doesn't um, uh, probably doesn't get a, a enough attention or a lot of attention in outside of education. Which uh, and there's a lot of there's a lot of upside also in 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 the corporate uh, in the corporate world as well. Um, now, tell me the. Let me pose this question to you. Uh, and you, you've done quite a lot of, uh, you know, produced a, quite a lot of content around this. You've done a lot of research as well around the, these this particular topic, but. Um, why, why do you think we do need, um, you know, do need a device with a, a digital, a digital pen? Yep. Uh, and I like, you know, putting the question forward and we always sort of catch it this way, you know, is the pen mightier than the keyboard? Mm. Uh, it's, just, it's not an either or, you know, it's never an either or the, the keyboard is a workhorse. Um, and it's, you know, probably I'd spend 70 to 90% of my time, you know, banging away on a keyboard, right? Most people do, but there's. Yeah, the, the thing that I think is underdone is that, you know, 10, maybe to 30% of your time, which is spent problem solving, ideating, note taking, doing all sorts of tasks that don't suit a keyboard well. Um, you know, that the, the keyboard is a mechanical device, you know, you, you press buttons on an array, you know, it's an array of buttons and you just simply press the right button, you get the letter up. When you're using it, you don't have to think much. Like, you know, you press it and the, the words go mm. across and they just automatically wrap. The computer handles it for you. And that, that uh, yeah, that's an important piece of the puzzle. But when we look at the pen and the research behind the pen, we see that the pen, you know, whether it's pen on paper or a digital pen, it's a thinking tool. Um, you know, I think about all sorts of work scenarios and where this sort of fits into the, well, what I sort of call the life cycle of work. Usually when, you know, something happens, I need to do a piece of work. Well, we've got to kind of figure out what it actually is first. You know, what's the problem that we're experiencing? What solution do we need to come up with? You know, what question do we need to answer? Something like that. We tend to grab a pen. Like if you ring up a, a, an electrician and say, I need a couple of PowerPoints, what's, what are they going to do? They're probably going to grab a pen, write it down on a piece of paper. You know, that's the first action that we tend to take. So um, it's it's the same when you consider any problem that comes up, whether it's, hey, let's put together a podcast or what topics are we going to talk about? You know, what's this script going to be? Um, your go-to is probably a pen for most people. These days, a lot of pro people probably retrain themselves to do that on a keyboard, but it's actually better done with a pen. Um, and what, you know, the bit that I like to help people discover is that you can do that digitally and it has a lot of upside. Like it's not, again, it's not everything. Um, some people love to stick to pen and paper and, and that's okay, but there's a lot of benefits that you can get from using a digital pen. Um, yeah, that, yeah. that aren't, aren't being realized. Yep. Yeah, and and one of those benefits you you talk about, um, and I'm sure you you've uh, again done a lot of research around this is is that you talk about that when you're using a pen that it's better for your brain. Um, yep. Now, yep. explain explain how that is. Well, I've got a little presentation here um, queued up. You might want to bring it up uh, for me, Daniel. I will. Yeah, cool. So, um, and and you know what? This is a presentation that I put together with help from Travis Smith. Um, back in the day, I, I think I put this together about 2015, 2016, and I um, I ended up presenting it to one of the Microsoft sales conferences over in, in Redmond, which was a pretty cool experience, right? But, um, you know, the, these two ladies at the time were, were really the, the the standout sort of researchers that, that kept popping up. And again, I got these from Travis, right? Pam Mueller and Sharon Oviatt. Now, um, Pam Mueller uh, did, I'll come back to Sharon Oviatt, but she did a study called The Pen is Mightier Than the Keyboard, probably the inspiration for this, uh, this, this, blog, um, this, this title today. But, um, and in her study, she found that, uh, and it, actually Pam Mueller is really interesting. She was a, um, a Jeopardy, Serial Jeopardy contestant. She used to win all the time, won a lot of money from Jeopardy in the States. So she's a really sort of well-known face over there. But um, And she wasn't actually a professor as well. I always thought that she was. And I think I've put her there as a professor. She's not in my slides. That's incorrect. She was just a researcher. But she got together with her professor, which was um, Daniel Oppenheimer, I think it was. And and they, you know, they sort of, what happened was she was typing notes on her laptop and her laptop died one day in, in a lecture. And so she was forced to use pen and paper. Everybody was doing laptops, you know, in the lecture. And that's what happens in universities today. And when she came out, she went, 
wow, I think I got a lot more out of that lecture. Uh, and there's something to do with this pen thing, you know, it was pen and paper, her, her research. Um, so they went and studied it, right? And they found that people tended to do better on factual recall when they used a pen and paper, um, you know, modality to, to record their notes. They just tended to remember things better. And they tended to be able to, you know, be able to expand and understand the concepts that were presented better. That's what their research showed. Um, they thought their sort of premise was, ah, oh, we think it's because when you type notes, like, you know, you're listening to a lecture, you type notes, you type exactly what was said. You can sort of keep up. If you're a fast typer, you can probably, you know, I'm probably speaking maybe 160 words a minute. Maybe I can type 120 words a minute. I can get most of it down. And people become human photocopiers when they're typing notes, right? We just, you know, the words come in, they come out of our fingertips and they go into the, the program. So we're not really processing it. We're not thinking about it. And that's what they thought. Well, maybe you know, there's something to do with this. It's, uh, you know, when we write notes, we're probably writing at 40, 50 words a minute, a lot slower. Um, you have to summarize. You just have to. So you've got to pick out the key points and then you write them down. That was the premise of their research. I think it was actually interesting, but I don't think it was on the money, right? I don't think that's where the, the real... Um, answer was. Uh, Sharon Oviatt, really interesting paper that you can probably dig up still is called Computer Interfaces and Their Impact on Learning. We did videos on both of these ladies, uh, Pam Mueller and Sharon Oviatt on, a, on this recent series we did on um, the science behind the Surface Pen. Um, but Sharon Oviatt's been doing research on this stuff for years. She, you know, she's like a, a HCI or Human Computer Interface researcher. Um, actually now associated with Monash University, I think, in Australia, which is kind of weird. She came from Oregon um, in, uh, in the States. But, um, yeah, so her research showed that people get, students in particular, again, very focused on education, but get far better results. I mean, sort of talking between a 9 and 60% difference in results when they take notes with a pen and, and work on diagrams and work on problems with a pen versus when they work on them with a keyboard. So that was a mm. huge impact. Um, and, and, you know, she's consistently showed this you know, on research over 20 years, right? Um, but her focus is on multimod multimodal computer uh, input, um, you know, inputs like speech as well, which are really important, pen, touch, the whole sort of suite of inputs. And that's what I think that we need on, on our computers today. And this, you know, Sharon Oviatt kind of explains part of why. Um, she also brings up an interesting concept in her research and uh, some previous researchers had spoken about it as well, uh, talking about what they call performance preference paradox. So she showed students, hey, look, you're going to get a better result if you use a pen to work this out. And and her work was mainly focused on digital pens as well, on, on computers like I'm using here with a Surface, right? Um, but the students would go, oh, yeah, but I just prefer to type. And, you know, I think it comes back to a little bit of peer pressure. It's like, what's everybody else doing? I'm just going to do that. Uh, and I think that applies in business as well. But but her research was really clear. More, more recently, I think this study here um, that, I mean, uh, it's just a picture of one of the uh, scenes from the study here. Um, I think this one's really nailed the direction of this research, right? And that is uh, Professors Van der Meer and Van der Weel from Nor uh, University of Norway. Um, they've done a couple of studies using an EEG hairnet, which is this, uh, this thing that's on this lady's head here, um, analysing the brain activity of people who write. And again, you can see there, you can possibly see that she's writing on a Surface Pro versus typing on a Surface Pro. So same device, you know, different modality. Um, and they showed very different brain activations in the tasks that they gave people to do with the pen versus the keyboard. So same task on a different modality. And uh, they basically explained, and again, I'm simplifying it, but um, that, that the, the activations in the brain, that the activity um, that showed up on that hairnet um, were more aligned to visual and spatial tasks than with the keyboard. So when you use the pen, visual and spatial, uh, when you use the keyboard, uh, more sort of auditory patterns in the brain. So kind of like hearing things. And I think this explains a lot about why people intuitively know that if they write something down, they remember it, right? This is why, you know, that you know that our our modern approach to computing, which is all typing, all keyboard based, it's you know, it's all typewriter based. It's just a, a morph of the typewriter. Um, it doesn't assist your memory like writing does, and that's because you know what um, I think it was Van der Meer said in their um, reports and their their media interviews after that study was you know th that. Writing with a pen gets your whole brain going. It's it's like activating so many senses: touch, 
sight, sound, the whole you know gamut, plus the motor skills that you need to drive a pen, you need a lot of very fine motor skills. Like if you think about the pen, you know, as you hold it, um, it's leveraged across your fingertip here, and you're making very, very small movements while you rest your hand on the screen or on the on the desk, right? Very, very tiny movements. Um, and that requires really precise fine motor skill to, to be able to form clear letters and all of those sorts of things and to, to be able to write across the page and plan your space. You so say you're thinking about where does this line end and where's the next one begin. Um, it, it's quite a it's quite a whole brain activity. And that's what they showed in their study. And I think that that uh, probably explains why the, those results uh, come back on those other studies like uh, Pam Mueller and um, Sharon Oviatt's study show that, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's better outcomes with a pen. Mm. And so with what are your thoughts on, on why, uh, I guess, this doesn't uh, – this, this gets a lot of attention, obviously, in, in the education space, but there's uh, – I can see so many upside in, um, you know, in the impact of performance, especially in the corporate world, right? So, yep. um, you know, th there's all of the, the, the benefits that you've just outlined there, um, yep. which, yes uh, – perfectly aligned with with the education vertical um, but what about if we if you talk about the, the, the corporate side um, yeah. why don't you think that, that it's you know had had more um, I guess more impact in in that vertical yep. it's a, I mean I think it's a classic change problem right um, and um, and Matt and I um, in Matt in fact Matt's my brother that I work with. Um, he uh, he used to refer to a lot the uh, classic Donald Rumsfeld speech, which is um, you know the, there are known unknowns, and mm -hmm. we have unknown knowns, and you know that and it goes on, and there's the unknown unknowns, and it kind of falls into that category, right? That you don't know what you don't know, and so mm -hmm. when we go and do training with people on Surface, for example, you know, I mean, I, I'm a huge advocate of two-in-one devices like this. I think every computer needs a pen, it needs touch, it needs great voice input, it needs a camera, and it needs a keyboard, right? But um, in the corporate and government world where we work, you know, we work with a lot of big government departments. Uh, we train a lot of executives and people like that as well um, all over the place. You know, I've done executive training in uh, in New York City for a bank executive, you know, like it's crazy stuff, the places that this, this approach has taken us. But... Um, Typically, people just don't know, right? They get a computer and what happens is like probably maybe 50, 60% of the surfaces in the world are sold into co corporate IT mm -hmm. and IT made the decision. They bought into the idea and the journey. But when it gets to the end user and you get landed a new computer, they're usually pretty happy to get a Surface and, and listening, like, Surface is doing incredible um, you know, in that space. They're, they're, uh, they're really always kicking goals. So people are getting Surface on the desk and they go, cool, I got a Surface and I recognize the brand and it's a cool, sleek, you know, small device. And I just had the laptop there and I just switch over to this here and I just keep doing what I was doing, right? Mm -hmm. And and we come in and do training a lot and people go, oh, yeah, I got that pen thing and I, I just put it in my drawer. I didn't know what to do with it, you know? So they don't know what's possible. So a big part of our job is just educating people on what is possible with their device. Hey, you could do this process that you do on paper on your screen. And, you know, if you do it digitally, you remember when we moved from, um, you might be old enough, Daniel, I don't know. A lot of people aren't that were ice you, but we moved from typewriters to computers, you know. I'm not, I'm not that old. Give me a break. <laughs> I am. All right. So I'm, I'm 45. And, you know, my dad used to bring home a typewriter with um, a correct, and my mom had a typewriter. Um, and there was a resistance. There was a heck of a lot of resistances. And I remember my dad was really heavily involved. He worked for ICI. Um, big, you know, chemical company at the time, and and there were mainframe computers, and then there were desktop computers coming out. There was a thing called a word processor that IBM made. There was a lot of resistance to that change because you know we're just like, and there's, you know, what there's still actors and like Tom Hanks, for example, who still goes the typewriter is the awesome, you know, the, they're the ultimate, and he loves typewriters and collects typewriters, right? But we had to make that sort of transition. It took about probably twenty years for it to happen. Mm. Um, this is the same sort of thing, but with less awareness and a bit more complication because it's harder than moving from a typewriter. They're pretty, pretty logical and easily changed to go from a typewriter to Word Perfect back in the day. Um, and yeah, you know, from a typewriter to Microsoft Word or something. But to go from pen and paper to a digital pen and paper, it's actually a lot more complicated. And I think that's the challenge. People don't know that you can do it. And it's, you know, it's had a few false starts on the journey.
Yeah. Yeah, and, and I guess with obviously with the 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 current state of, of where everybody's at, working from home and remote, and you know we're 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 meeting a lot virtually, um, and that's just the way it is, and it's probably not going to go back to the way things yeah. were. Um, so we're having all these these virtual meetings, whether it's by by Teams or Zoom or, or whatever the case may be, um, and we do still need to to take notes and, and that type of thing. And and I think uh, I still see it today where you know people are in meetings or, or uh, even virtually cameras on, but they're typing and you know th they've got yeah. all that that type of note taking, but. Um, you produced some content and wrote some content that I, I've, I found really interesting around, um, you know, the, the best different ways or different options to be able to, to, to take notes in these in these virtual meetings. Um, yep. Tell me a little bit about the, the insight there and also some, some maybe some examples of, of some setups and, and the way that you actually do it yourself as well. Yeah, um, so I might actually uh, get out of this PowerPoint presentation here and I'll, I might even bring it up. I'll just prep it first. But, um, you know, back in the day, uh, we used to sort of trade on, uh, <laughs> you know, teaching people how to take notes in meetings face to face, right? Because, yeah. um, you know, you let, like go into a meeting space and in a lot of companies, you'll see if they've been using laptops for a long time, um, everybody's got their screen up and they're all typing notes against each other sort of thing. There's a barrier between you and the other person. It was kind of really impersonal. You know, am I chatting on Teams or on Facebook or something like that? Or am I actually taking notes mm. and paying attention to the meeting? Nobody could see because you had your laptop sitting up there like that, right? And so we used to encourage people to put their device flat on the desk, grab their pen out and actually start handwriting notes on their screen. We teach people how to do that. And we'd use OneNote as the tool to do that. And in OneNote, there's some great tools around, uh, you know, bringing in your meeting details from your Outlook diary, things like that, um, that would help people to get off the, get the meeting started on the right foot. They'd have the whole list of attendees. They'd have all the information, the agenda, all that sort of stuff right there in front of them. And then they could start handwriting their notes. So, and, you know, why would you want to handwrite your notes instead of type them? Well, you're going to get better memory outcomes. You're going to remember the meeting. You're going to be clearer on it when you walk out of that meeting room. You're going to be processing the information and coming up with ideas and understanding what's going on far better. And taking notes with a pen helps you stay focused and pay attention as well. There's a lot of benefits to it. Plus the fact that if I hand write out my notes, I could convert them to text uh, very easily in OneNote and you know send a copy of them on very quickly without having to sit down and retype the notes, which typically never happens, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of benefits in face-to-face, -face, but as you say, like the last year has been really interesting because um, like on our, on our YouTube channel, there's certain videos that just got ridiculously popular, um, like how to sign a PDF in Adobe Acrobat, which is terrible, by the way. The Acrobat program is terrible for it, but that's what people want to know, you know. So mm -hmm. I found this video, it's just gone through the roof. Um, so people are suddenly shifted, you know, where I don't have access to a printer and I can't do the stuff that I did on paper typically. So now I've got to think about doing this digitally. Uh, and I, I think it's probably been bad in some ways because a lot of people, like you said, they've shifted from taking pen and paper notes in their um, in their meeting space to taking notes with their laptop keyboard mm. in a team call. Um, and yeah, I just think it's a well, we know from the science that it's it's going to be a bad outcome. It's not going to help people to really think through and come up with the best solutions and problems to things. So, so yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of technology that can actually enable you to take notes and even to brainstorm and ideate with your colleagues from wherever you are. Um, you know, people like you and I, we've been working from home forever. So, you know, or on the road, you know, for me, it was typically on the road out, out training customers all over the place. Um, but yeah, spending the last year in the office, we've had to kind of, you know, adopt more of these things. Uh, yeah, so tools like OneNote uh, are gonna be really, really important for that. I've just, um, I'm just gonna see if I can get to my uh, training notebook here. See if I can show you a couple. Yeah, of and I've I've taken um, actually, well, behind me here, got uh, my companion device, and I've I've taken quite a bit of a, a advice from you, obviously, um, and and I'm now using that for uh, in in meetings. So I might be joined into a Teams meeting on my primary device, but have a companion device there to to take my digital notes. 
Um, and yep. you know that type of setup is is something that I'm finding really beneficial. Uh, again, using OneNote, but I'm able to now uh, you know have those notes, type that well, write those notes out, and I am finding that from a a, a product, a personal productivity point of view, so much more um, effective in, especially in meetings as well. And you're right in in that you know using OneNote as well, being able to then maybe share that with meeting attendees or you know convert your 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 writing to text and and that type of thing. That there's so many other added advantages to. I mean, there's not just OneNote in particular, but but taking those digital notes. Uh, you know, I've told many examples of this in you know in my training sessions and to people over the years. But this is an example, right? So 2017, I was at Legal Aid WA in, in Perth, yep. and, um, and I I just searched for legal WA legal just then in OneNote, and it found this handwritten note. So you know, for me, that was always one of the the, the things that OneNote did. That I mean, it's incredible. Like even people, a lot of people at Microsoft uh, aren't aware of this. You know. Um, mm. I've met plenty of people over in Redmond and they're like, I didn't know you could do that. And um, being able to search your handwritten notes. And, you know, if you think about for most people, notes from 2017, they're in a drawer in the office probably, locked away in the office and we're not there anymore or they're, they're ditched now. But I can pull that note up at, you know, a moment's notice and I can go back all the way to 2003. Not that I need to, but, you know, it's pretty handy sometimes to be able to have this. And you can see... I've written down all of the details that I took, you know, as I walked into the building with the the CIO there and he gave me a briefing on what sort of setup they had, all that sort of stuff, so I could do my training. And then I wrote down the names of the people um, who were in that training session. And this was a physical training session, right? I don't do this mm. these days. Yeah. It's not, not sitting around a table. But this is an incredible memory aid. If you want to learn, you know, if you want to see the power of writing something down, right? What you you know, when you go to a physical space and you meet with people, what I do is I just draw up a table like that, and I would write everybody's first name around the table, and then I would address them by by their first name, and you sort of you know you learn how to do this, but um, um, people are just people love it when you address them by their name when you've mm. never met them before, right? Um, so you know, and I remember just by looking at this little diagram, I remember those people like Graham and Graham. You know, the CEO and the CIO had the same name, and I just you know, um, it pops back into your memory. So you know, using OneNote, um, hey, that's perfect for meeting notes and, and being able to bring in the details and all that sort of stuff of the meeting, so that you can actually take notes is fantastic. The trouble comes now in that you know where, um, and maybe I'll get you to stop sharing that screen, Daniel. But um, we're at home, right? And this is really tricky, you know, I'm uh, even to do this, you know, I'm trying to coordinate looking at the camera that I've got set up there and the tablet that I've got on my desk and, you know, it, it's kind of hard to, to to have all that working as well as to be able to take notes maybe mm -hmm. on the same device. Uh, for me, you know, I'm a bit sport because I work, you know, in, in the Surface space. We buy all the latest Surface devices and I've got like five of them sitting here on my desk, right, and I just pick up a Surface and I use that as a second device. And uh, you've got your Pro X behind you there and you do the same, right? Um, so when I'm on a meeting, I'll have it up on the big screen, but I've got the Surface here ready to take notes. Mm. We use OneDrive so the two are in sync and I can look at the notes on the screen as I'm taking them, which is pretty cool. But it is possible with a decent webcam and a decent second screen to actually have your Surface flat on the desk. Maybe you use the Surface dock or something like that. You don't need it. Um, I've got a monitor that plugs straight in with USB-C to the side of my Surface. And then I can have my Surface flat on the desk still look at the people on the screen and take notes at the same time. And that's what the Surface, um, you know, enables for us. It, uh, and another interesting one that, that I saw, I'm sure it was you that, that uh, it was probably part of that, that same article, but um, where you had, you, you join, joining a Teams meeting with your phone. So you've got your phone yeah. on a, whether it's a tripod or, or what a stand or whatever, um, but you're joining the, the meeting on your phone um, yep. And then, so if you don't have second monitors or, or anything like that, you've got a, you got your Surface device or, or another device yeah. that you can take your notes on, but you're joining the meeting on your phone yeah. and you've still got, you know, visual and camera and all that sort of stuff. Is that, yeah. is that a, do you find, is that a common setup? I mean, do you, do you find that being used at all? It's, it's an interesting, interesting setup. It is, yeah. Uh, it's hard for me to say being, you know, stuck mm. uh, not doing face-to-face -face training based in Melbourne here <laughs> at the moment. Um, not that we're locked down, but, um, yeah, I don't think we're going to see much face-to-face -face training activity for the next sort of six months. So I don't know 
mm. so much what people are actually doing. I only know what I suggest to them to do. Uh, but yeah. certainly got a lot of comments in that video with people telling me their scenarios and even throwing a few more scenarios in. Like I, yeah, I had that, it's three different scenarios. One is to use a webcam, one is to use a second device, and one would be just to use mount your phone, as you say. The trouble with using the phone, uh, well, you, you know, you can probably get around it, but um, is you, if people share their screens, it's a small device. Yeah. So, you know, that's not so good. But usually your phones have great cameras and mics, so um, especially a modern one. Um, so you can you can do a pretty good job just mounting that on your desk and then, yeah, dedicating your Surface to just taking notes. So it's just worth investing, you know, watching a video like that and investing the time to get your setup right mm -hmm. so that you can, you know, so that you can do it because... Yeah, I mean, coming back to the point, you know, better ideas, better memory, you know, better outcomes. Why wouldn't you? You know, why wouldn't you invest a bit of time to to master a setup like that? Um, and usually the answer is I didn't know. So we're just trying to yeah. raise awareness on that. So it's good that we're talking about it today. Yep. Yeah. No, excellent. Now, you, you preempted my final question for you, um, and I'm going to put you on the spot and see how good yep. you are. Now, I the, the, the top... The, give me your top three um, reasons why the pen, you should use a pen for your digital note taking. Uh, well, for note taking, yeah, certainly uh, you will have a much better memory of your meeting. Um, you will be able to think and pay attention more. I mean, those are the top three reasons that you'd do it. But you know what? You could easily say, hey, you could do that on paper as well. So to extend that into the digital space, why wouldn't I do it on paper? Why would I do it in digital? Well, I can search my notes, my handwritten notes, as you just hopefully saw there in that little example, right? Uh, and there's been countless times where I've gone, I don't remember meeting with those people, pull up the notes, bang, I'm back in that meeting and I remember exactly what we're doing, right? You know what the the search sorry to interrupt but that the search feature in OneNote is something so simple but something that yeah. is um, underutilized and yeah. extremely extremely good to use. Yep. So I can search them. I can store them infinitely. Right. I mean, you know, yeah. I've got twenty years of notes now. I wasn't pretty active back then with note taking. I was only learning how to do it. But I still I can go back to. I can go back to 2003. I can go a bit before that, but they're in an old format. They're in the old original journal, Microsoft mm. journal format. Um, so, yeah, nearly 20 years of notes I've got at, at, at my fingertips. And I used to say, you know, like you think of an SD card, micro SD card, I can fit the whole lot on a tiny little wafer of memory. Uh, you can't do that with, with physical notes. And people are now finding that the physical notes are stuck in their office, which they're not there. So it, it enables true mobility. I can have the information at my fingertips of the last meeting that we had. You know, even if it was two years ago, I can search it. Uh, I can send you a copy of it, right? You know, that note mm. I brought up, shoot you a copy of it. These things are not easy to do with pen and paper. And then when you extend it and you start to think about, well, you know, note taking has been a personal process. You know, I do it on my own. We used to do a little bit of ideation in the office with a whiteboard. But no, maybe we can actually do that in a digital space as well and start collaborating in ways that weren't possible before, not just with people who we work with, you know, who we used to be face to face with, but people who are anywhere in the world. You know, I can have an ideation session on Microsoft Whiteboard with the pen in a low formality, you know, um, you know, um, brain engaging format uh, without the need to be physically present. And that's, yeah. yeah. Interesting you say that. I mean, uh, I, I can see Trav, Trav uh, around here too, but um, we used to always have a conversation about it, especially in schools where you've got the, the teacher with a whiteboard up the front, standing up the front, um, back turned with, with uh, the whiteboard marker working on the whiteboard, whereas you could quite easily connect your device to a projector, project that on the screen, um, on the board, at the front of the classroom or at the front of the conference room for, for even yeah. for any, any scenario. But then you, you're using your pen on your surface and now you've got a, a, a digital whiteboard uh, instead yeah. of having to, you know, be, you know, rubbing things off and uh, that yeah. type of thing. Yeah. And yeah. And, and the physical barriers just disappear. And I, mm. you know, I, um, I've done a lot of regional training for organizations. Like um, I think the last sort of long regional engagement I did was for WorkSafe in Victoria um, you know, went to Mildura and, and Sale and all sorts of places hours and hours away from Melbourne. And those people just typically get left out of mm. decisions, 
processes and they you know there's a lot of intelligence sitting out in those regions for organizations like that they just get forgotten because they're not in the office right um and this is an opportunity with COVID to change that and not only in in speaking to them face to face because everybody's now adapted to to tools like teams and zoom but also to include them in the thinking parts of work which Mm. uh that's really, I see really important early stages of any piece of work that needs to be done. It needs to be done with a pen before you head to the keyboard, right? The workload, you know, the heavy lifting is going to be done with a keyboard, but the thinking has to be done with a pen in order to be really, really good. Um, and it's possible, you know, it's possible now. Mm. Very good. All right. We are going to leave it there, mate. So uh, really appreciate your time this morning. Uh, Some great insights there. You've done some amazing work and research uh, and and content production around this particular topic. So um, for those that are tuning in live um, and for those that are watching this recording, where can they where can they find more about you and also the everything that that all the content that you're producing around these topics uh, at the moment. I'll bring your screen up and you can I'm gonna slide share, back your, to share your details with Perfect everybody. Yeah. Give away all my presentation there. Yeah, so, um, yeah, feel free to um, – you can email me. My email address is there. Um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, just look me up and uh, or our YouTube channel. Uh, I started the YouTube channel, I think, in like about 2007 or something. I called it Oz Tablet PC. I don't really know. It's like the only name that was available at the time. Yeah, <laughs> right. um, so it doesn't really mean anything. But Oz Tablet PC, um, yeah. And, um, yeah, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell. You know, it's, it's, you know how it works. Then do that for Daniel as well, right? Um, so very good. Very, very useful channel. Yeah. It is indeed. I uh, I watch a lot of your content. So uh, uh, adds a lot of value. So very, very good. Uh, all right. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, once again, appreciate it. For everybody that uh, that was watching live, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, and for everybody that that watches this recording, I uh, hope you enjoyed as well. And feel free to reach out to, to Brett uh, if you want any more information. So uh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me on.